Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about acids and bases. So the acid-base reaction is one of the most basic reactions in organic chemistry, but it actually has a lot of interesting concepts kind of buried inside of it. Now, there are a lot of different ways to describe acids and bases. We are going to stick with the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Okay, so you'll hear a lot of them, but that's the one that we're going to be discussing today. And so we basically want to be able to tell or to predict what compounds are going to be more basic or more acidic than others. Now, this is actually something that chemists think about all the time because we're typically doing chemistry with complex molecules. And so if a molecule has more than one oxygen on it, we need to be able to predict which oxygen is most likely to act like a base or act like an acid, okay, so that we can tell them apart. And so this is something that, even though it seems like kind of a simple reaction, it's actually something that is really important to learn and to be able to do. And so the Bronsted-Lowry, the basic definition of an acid-base reaction is we're going to have some kind of base, and we're going to mix that with some kind of acid. And what's going to happen is the base is going to take the proton and leave the acid. So bases typically start being negatively charged. And when they end, now they have the proton, they're no longer negatively charged, and now that acid is negatively charged. And so this brings us to the first kind of concept. We start with a base and an acid, and then what we make is called a conjugate acid. and a conjugate base. And we need to think about all four of these, these things when we're thinking about the reactivity. Okay, and so the other thing I want to kind of make clear about in the beginning is that it's not so much that a particular molecule is a base or is an acid. Different things can act like an acid or act like a base depending on the situation that they're in. Okay, so water can be deprotonated, okay, and so it can act like an acid, but it can also go and take an extra proton and act like a base. So it depends on the particular situation. So I want you to try to remember that all these things are relative. We're always going to be discussing whether or not a particular molecule is more acidic than or more basic than something else. It's not that there's absolutes. And so a reaction, a typical reaction, or a, an example for us to use, is something like this. So I have drawn us an amine and an alcohol. And if I was to ask you which one of these is more basic, well then what we need to do, and what I would definitely suggest doing while you're learning, is show yourself the actual reaction. So if this is going to act like a base, then it's going to react with something that has a proton to become then positively charged. Okay, so our amine took off a proton of the acid, and so now it has three hydrogens and a bond to carbon that makes it positively charged. If the alcohol goes through the same reaction and acts like a base, then we're going to get the oxygen being positively charged. Okay. And so now if we want to know which one of these two is more acidic, we're going to compare the conjugate acids that we've made here. Okay, so we've also made the conjugate bases of A, but those are the same in both cases, so we don't care about that. And so if we compare these two positively charged species, we can use electronegativity to say that oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. That means that nitrogen is going to be more stable as a positive charged entity. If this is more stable, that means that this molecule is more likely to steal the proton and become positively charged, meaning that this one is more basic than the alcohol. If we want to ask the question the other way, 
which one's more acidic, then we need to put them through that reaction. And so if we take our amine and our alcohol and we add them into a generic base, negatively charged, I'll put my electrons on. The base is going to steal a proton, giving us NH minus and O minus. And so now we want to compare these two anions. Well, we know that oxygen is more electronegative. It's more stable being negatively charged than nitrogen is. If this is more stable, then the OH is more likely to just to give up its proton. Okay, it's more stable, negatively charged than the nitrogen, which makes this one more reactive. It doesn't mind giving up its proton as much as the nitrogen does because the oxygen doesn't mind as much or is more stable being negatively charged than the nitrogen. And so that means that this one is more acidic. So in a lot of cases, you can do this exercise and use the periodic trends to figure out if something is going to be more basic or more acidic than another atom. The other really important concept that, that comes into acidity and basicity is resonance. So this we can use periodic trends for, but what would we do with an example like this? Where in both cases, we're looking at oxygens. So if I was to ask you which one of these is more acidic, okay, so if it's going to act with a base to become the negatively charged, and if this one acts with a base to become negatively charged, okay, we'll put on some of our lone pairs. Here we're just comparing two oxygens to each other, so we can't use a periodic trend for that. Okay, we have to use resonance. I have a valid resonance form for this carb uh, carbonyl. I can move two of these electrons and move two of these electrons and draw a valid resonance form that looks like this. I have no valid resonance forms for the alcohol. There are two hydrogens here. And so there's nowhere for me to push these electrons to move the electronegativity away from that oxygen. And so this molecule has a resonance form, and this one does not. This resonance form means that each of these oxygens is really only holding negative one-half of the charge. Okay, holding negative one-half is less negative charge than holding the whole charge by yourself. And so this one is more stable. Okay, which means that this one is more acidic. We could also believe that because this is called a carboxylic acid and this is called an alcohol, right? So if acid is in the name, it's probably pretty acidic. And while we do typically spend our time looking at the difference between two molecules, there is an absolute scale, okay? Something called pKa values. And so you can memorize these. There's hundreds of them available online. Um, and they are absolute values that tell you how acidic or how basic something is with a number. So you could also memorize those tables and then have that in your head. And if you saw these two things, you would know, well, this is a pKa of between 4 and 5. And this has a pKa around 15, so this one's more acidic. Okay, and I would certainly encourage you to memorize some of them just kind of for a fast baseline. But if you don't have those memorized, then you can think your way through it like this take your molecule, take the time to actually put it through the reaction so you can figure out what you're supposed to be comparing, and then you can either use a trend from the periodic table or use some resonance forms. Okay, the more resonance forms, the more stable. And in this case, the more stable, the more acidic. Okay, so this should help you to figure out um, what molecules are more acidic or more basic than other molecules as you go forward in organic chemistry. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps.